Hello and welcome again to the Widow's Oil. Today I want to have a look at where James warns us um, about personal favoritism in our faith. Let us read James 2. James tells us there from verse 1 onwards, my brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should also come a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and you say to him, you sit here in a good place, and say to the poor man, you stand there, or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So what James tells us here is such a beautiful commentary on um the problem we are dealing with, namely this, um, all these doctrines which are coming into the churches, making a distinction between Christians and Jewish messianics or Jews and Gentiles. There are so many of these ministries over the internet um, and many churches because of the Hebrew roots movement have slowly but surely moved to making a distinction between believers. And in this part, I see how people, I see it on the internet, how people treat the Jews like a rich man, like a very important person, just like people do in the church with the physically wealthy. They are doing the same thing now. Um, Remember in the parable of the rich young ruler, um, which we find in uh, Matthew 19, Jesus speaks to the rich young ruler. Um, and this young, this young ruler basically um, says all the, he wants to know which commandments he should keep. Um, but he was not able to follow um, the Lord because of all his of all his wealth. He had great possessions. Now Jesus told him basically, you know, you should do all the the law. You should do these things. But he basically said. He said, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. So I want to point, I want to stress this, follow me. So what Jesus told him is, um, his keeping of the Torah was only part of what he was to do. He must follow him, you see. So to me, the rich young ruler, um, actually is a symbol of when we are rich in all our doctrines and our traditions because his heart was not right. 
Yes, we must do all these things, of course, and even more because Jesus brought us the royal law of love. His law is at a higher level. But we do not just tick the boxes. That is a form of godliness, denying our Lord, who is the power of um, our faith. Um, the thing is to follow him, you see. So we can be rich in our doctrines. And this is what James is warning us. Just like it is wrong what we do in the churches to um, give those that have more money a more prominent place. Likewise, in the spirit, um, what is happening now is that the Jewish believers are being lifted up and the Christians are sort of like they now become the Gentiles when the Lord has already come to make us one, you see. So there's this favoritism of the church, preferring the Messianic believer or the um, Jew that has converted or even maybe just the Jews. Lots of people just do that. It says there, hasn't God chosen the poor of the world to be rich in faith? Didn't the Lord 2,000 years ago choose those that, that he said the harlots and the tax collectors would enter in before those Pharisaic law keepers? And that was what happened, you see, because a lot of those of Israel scattered in the among the Gentiles, living as the Gentiles, they were the first fruits. And they were the poor in spirit. And today, who is seen as the poor in spirit is the is the little the little Christian. You see, that's seen as um, as not having knowledge when they say that we are saved only by the grace. Okay, so. Um, yeah, I will again say that by that I do not say that we do not have um, commandments to to obey. Look here, yeah, he says, uh, we must speak and do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. That is the law of Jesus Christ, the law of liberty or the royal law of love which focuses on you shall love your neighbor as yourself, but showing partiality and um, claiming that God loves the Jews more than and that they are the apple of his eye when the Lord has already come and brought the new covenant. Under the new covenant, we are all the apple of his eye. But if we show this partiality, we commit sin. And then he says, even if you then are fully keeping the law, but you stumble at the point of love, then you are guilty. It's all for nothing. So all the Torah keeping is for nothing because you have now actually um, transgressed the royal law of love, the law of Christ, you see. So it says they do not commit adultery. In other words, you think that if you keep the law, you are not a spiritual harlot. But the law also says do not murder. Now, if you hate your brother spiritually, according to Jesus, you have murdered. And I want to tell you that many Jewish believers do hate Gentiles. Unfortunately, they have been brainwashed since childhood. And it's not just Jewish people. There are many um, white people that have supremacy ideas and likewise many black people. So it's part of our sinful nature, the supremacy to hate other people from other groups. So being spiritually faithful in your own eyes by keeping the Torah, but you do not love your brother, then you are guilty also. You are guilty and you've transgressed the law of Jesus Christ. So do not do that.
And then also I want to point out this one. In those days, the, it was the Judaizers that dragged the believers into courts. Also physically rich, I guess that happened also, but we are looking spiritually. And um, it will repeat because we are Jesus warned us that that we, we will um, in in times of apostasy, this is going to happen. It's been happening all these two thousand years of people, Christians being um, dragged in front of courts of men. The uh, Roman Catholic Church did it. Um, the Roman Empire did it. Before that, the Sanhedrin did it. So it is from that uh, group that you want to lift up, you know, those that you see as spiritually rich, the pastor, the preacher, those are the ones that are actually persecuting you. And then also, do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? We are called Christians. Now already, People are looking down on that title and that those that of the Jewish people that turn to, to Jesus, they do not want to call him Jesus and they do not want to call themselves a Christian. Now, that's not blaspheming yet. It's not to that extent. But you see, it's looking down on Jesus and on his children who are the Christian believers. So the Bible is coming alive in our day with lots of advice for us to be comforted by the word of truth.